Hi, this is David Voss, CCIE 11372, and in this video we're covering spanning tree port types, cost and priority, as well as timers. So we'll discuss root bridge election, cost and priority, root and designated ports, and also we'll talk about alternate and backup ports as well. So spanning tree root bridge election, following initialization, all switches initially assume that they are root, but the switch with the highest bridge priority is elected this the spanning tree root bridge. Now all things being equal, if nothing's been configured and all things set are set to default, then the root bridge is chosen by the lowest order MAC address. During root election, no traffic is forwarded over any switch in the same spanning tree domain until things are stabilized and there's a loop free topology. Spanning tree uses cost and priority values to determine the best path to the root bridge. In the 802.1D specification, it assigns a 16-bit default port cost values to each port. Now, note this before we dig into the actual port values. The port cost is globally significant and is included in all propagated BPDUs. By default, the lower number, the lower costs are more preferred. So you're going to see this in a second as we draw this out. But in the event that multiple ports have the same path cost, then Spanning Tree will consider the port priority. The default value is 128. But you should note that the port priority is locally significant and not included in Spanning Tree protocol BPDUs. So the spanning tree protocol default port cost, it depends on the interface speed. And you'll notice here from this chart that the higher the speed, the lower the cost. And this comes into play when spanning tree is actually trying to calculate the best path to root. So for example, let's draw out a network with five switches. And we're gonna bring each of these switches online and let spanning tree decide which is the best path and which ports should be root, which ports should be designated ports. So they are all interconnected. And let's pretend we are powering them all on. Now let's say the switches aren't all of the same speed. So for example, we have a 10 megabit switch a hundred megabit switch and we'll just say all the interfaces on the switch are that speed a one gigabit switch a hundred megabit switch here and a one gigabit switch so as you remember from the chart these numbers should start to look familiar a cost of two is assigned to a 10 gigabit interface, cost of four, a one gigabit interface, cost of a 19, a hundred megabit interface, and a cost of 100 to a 10 megabit interface. And spanning tree will calculate, as you can see, it's doing right here. Spanning tree is calculating best path to, to the root. And let's say we've let's say we've assigned the one gigabit switch as our root. We've manually set it. Spanning tree would then calculate, and as you can see here, from the 10 megabit switch through the 100 meg over to the one gig, it's 100 and the total cost is 123. And then the other path, the total cost is 119. That's the lower cost. That would be the root port, because that would be the preferred path. So as you know, we've already talked about some of these ports, but Spanning Tree elects two types of ports that are used to forward BPDUs, and that's the root port. Now note, the root switch never has any root ports because this is the port that provides the best path to the root bridge. So every other switch is going to have one root port. That's the best path to the root bridge. The root bridge will not have a root port for obvious reasons. The root path cost is calculated based on the cumulative cost to the root. The designated port actually points away from the spanning tree root and it sits in a blocking state 
All ports on the route are designated ports because the route path cost will always be zero. The designated port is the best port on a segment. So for example, on a segment you will have, on a segment where there is no route switch, you will have one designated port and all the other ports will be either alternate or backup ports. We talked a bit, quite a bit about BPDUs in, in video lesson three, module one, but let's build upon that further. BPDUs include several timers that play an integral role in the operation of the protocol. And the mod modification of these timers should always be made at the root bridge. There are three configurable spanning tree timer values, which is hello, forward delay, and max age. The hello time is the time between each BPDU that is sent, and as you know, it is two seconds by default. Forward delay is the time that is spent in the listening and learning state, and you definitely learn about those states, or if you haven't learned it already, go back to lesson three, module one video, but you learned about those states in that video. And the, the forward delay time is 15 seconds by default. And then max age is set in the BPDU by the root bridge, which is 20 seconds by default. And if you'll remember, the max age timer controls the maximum length of time that passes before a bridge port saves its configuration BPDU information. Although it's 20 seconds by default, you can of course tune this time to be between 6 and 40 seconds. So let's jump into the lab and show spanning tree is obviously going to be one of the most popular commands we're going to run if we want to verify. You can see there's a lot of options here on how to view your spanning tree environment. Let's take a look at spanning tree for VLAN 1. And as you can see here, this bridge is the root. Now you know from what you've learned so far, how, to, how do you know this is the root? There's many indicators. It says it's the root and there are no root ports. They're all designated ports. Now, as we jump on a different switch, as expected, there are there is one root port on this switch, and there are two alternate ports and two designated. So let's take a look at who the root is for each of the VLANs. And you can see that by simply doing show spanning tree root. You can see the root ID. Well, I tell you what, you, some, sometimes you simply don't want to wait for spanning tree to tell you who's root, who root is going to be. You actually want to set who root is going to be. We want to make this root. And you do this by typing spanning tree VLAN1 root primary. And as you can see, we've now taken over DLS1 has now taken over as the root. Usually you like to set in your network who the root is. And you can see here, show spanning tree root. It shows that we are in fact the root. And you can see the default hello, max age, and forward delay timers. Now let's go ahead and reconfigure some of these timers. So we type in spanning tree VLAN1. Let's change the hello time. We want to send out BPDUs more frequently. Let's change it from the default to, and we're going to change it to, and we're going to change it from the default to. And then let's change another timer. We're going to change the max, and then we're going to change max age to 40. Finally, we're going to adapt the forward time to, to 30 seconds. And now we can show the results of what we've done. So here's what you've learned. You've learned about root bridge election. 
You've learned about port cost and priority, route and designated ports, and finally spanning tree timers and, and how to adapt them. Good luck in your continued studies.